Harrington is an extraordinary human being in regards to his ability to pull together the collaboration, the connections, and the resources. He's been doing it for a long time in finance and now in the space of business development and resource supplier connections. I don't say it as eloquently as he does, so I'm not going to try. But I want you to put your hands together and help me bring up Burke Carrington. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, RJ. I am quite pleased to be here in my first uh, time being in Salisbury at the Black Leadership uh, Breakfast, so I really appreciate the invitation. RJ called me about three weeks ago to come down. I'm actually in New York City right now, uh, pulling together a conference up there. Uh, we have a conference going on in Washington, D.C. on September 10th. Our next conference in North Carolina is on your sheet here on, on January 24th and 25th. Uh, we're looking to do one in Georgia, looking to do one in Florida. And I'm getting ready to give you a kind of an overview of what we're doing and why we're doing it, and a little bit of my background as well. Uh, how many of you are familiar with the term supplier diversity? Okay, some of you aren't. Supplier diversity is an area within corporate procurement, the buyers of a corporation, that focuses on doing more business with minority-owned companies, women-owned companies, some, some other companies do business with veteran firms, firms with, uh, owned by people with disabilities, LGBT, all kinds of different diversity stats. On the federal side, you also have 8A, Hub Zone, Small Disadvantage, all the different certifications she was, she was sharing earlier, uh, part of the federal government. But up, when you get down to the state level, you have Hub and other things in other states around the country. So I've been in this space for 20 plus years. Uh, Supplier Diversity Director for SunTrust Bank, I was at Wachovia, Wells Fargo. Uh, prior to that, prior to that, I was at Bank of America. 20 plus years in, in Charlotte, so I'm, I'm a, a homeboy, so to speak. Um, but um, I saw a lot of the challenges that were happening with diverse businesses across the country. Many of you may not realize this, but if you combine, if you look at the census data, the last census, if you combine minority-owned companies and women-owned companies together, I know there is some overlap, but if you combine them together, they represent over 51% of all businesses in the United States. Over 50% of the all businesses, right? But less than 7.9% of all revenues generated in the United States. More than 50% of the businesses, but less than 8% of all revenues. That is the reason for supplier diversity. To create parity in the marketplace, to do more business with minority-owned firms, women-owned firms around the country, etc. Corporations have been doing this, governments have been doing this as well. But there's challenges. I did our conference that we were referencing earlier in January of this year when I came back to North Carolina, our, our headquarters in Atlanta. When I came back to North Carolina and put back the numbers, hub numbers, historically unionized businesses, what the state calls it, hub numbers, I found out that about of all 345 agencies that are supposed to be reporting their spending with hub businesses, which are primarily minority owned businesses, only 79 of them out of 345 were reported. 79. Out of all the agencies around the state, that's how many were reported. So we've got all this disparity going on in the marketplace. And what is it, who is it impacting? You, the first business. So that's on the government side. Corporate side, we love to talk about numbers and things, but if you really pull back the numbers, they do business with very large firms, right? Because think about it, it's kind of the Walmart effect. It makes sense from a business perspective. You go to Walmart to get reduced pricing on products and services you buy, or the products you buy from Walmart, right? The way they reduce their pricing is they do economies of scale buying. They buy in bulk to reduce the individual cost of that product and service product to you. So therefore, you can get it at a discount. But what happens is, the smaller retailer may not be, or manufacturer may not be able to provide the volume they need, and may not be able to provide at the price they're looking for. So what happens is, it pushes the smaller guy out sometimes. 
That's what corporations do. They buy in bulk because they have size. But what happens is the smaller guy cannot play in that game because they don't have the capacity to service them. So when I was at Wachovia, we were buying banks. This is back in 2003, 2004. Buying banks all over the place. And some of the minority businesses were saying, well, we weren't getting contracts at this bank that you're buying. We hope to get contracts from you, Wachovia. And Wachovia's like, whoa. Well, you know, we, if you can't do business with them, we're that much bigger. You can't do business with us. So our community development folks gave me $12 million every year just to build an audio and companies in the world. One of my success stories is I took a company from $3 million in revenue to $150 million in revenue in two years and did not give them a contract or capital. So I learned how to grow companies. And the government agencies are looking for larger companies. Corporations are looking for larger companies. But we don't know how to grow. Right? So I said, no one is really addressing this issue of capacity building well. Also, to get capacity, you have to get more contracts. So no one's addressing that well. How do you get more contracts to smaller companies? Well, you get smaller firms that give out contracts. Well, Corporations and government agencies ask what they call their primes, those companies who do, do business directly with them, to subcontract with diverse firms. Smaller contract opportunities for smaller firms. But we in the government sector and the corporate sector are not doing that well. So I said, okay, no one's addressing this issue and it's affecting us. We cannot create wealth for us and our communities because of this gap. We don't have the capacity to service them, and we don't have the, the government agencies and the corporations don't have the tools to really do what we call second tier contracting, subcontracting very well. Can't track it well. They are relying on people to be good with reporting, but they don't do it half the times, and they're not enabled to do it well. So I said, okay, I will go and create a company to level the playing field. So what I did is I built a massive online website that creates opportunities for people to connect with each other in the corporate sector, the federal, state, and local government sector, as well as the prime contractors of those organizations so that everybody can connect with each other, all among us. Then I created tools to help them contract with each other, so bidding tools, partnership systems, all the types of things, all in one place. So now you can connect and you can contract. And then we built other tools to build capacity, access to capital, uh, finding great employees, you can find that at our platform, group buying so people can buy together, and we have online assessments and training and other types of things, as well as mentor project platforms to help companies grow. So I'll put that all together. So now we've built this monstrosity of a site that does all these things to help companies get more contracts, make more connections, and build their capacity. But how do we get the buyers in there? How do we get the corporations and government agencies and the primes in there who are buying? And how do we get the diverse businesses in the same system as well? Well, we said what we're going to do is we're going to do conferences. Because everybody knows a conference. So they can come to the conference. But when you register for the conference, you're going to register in this platform. So every buyer register in the platform to connect with the seller and we'll do matchmaking through that as at the conference as well so when you come in and register you create your little profile and say these are the things that I uh, sell and the buyer does the same thing these are the things I buy and then it matches you and you schedule time at the conference to meet one-on-one -on -one with those agencies or corporations to do business with them speed dating kind of format 15 minutes and you can go from company to company so we built that so we're doing these conferences across multiple states. Uh, we did with our next one, as you see here on, uh, on the flyers, is uh, 24th, 25th of January. That covers North and South Carolina. So we're going to have all kinds of government agencies, corporations, prime suppliers, everybody there. Uh, but we're also doing that in, like I said, DC. I'm in New York, New Jersey, trying to do a New York, New Jersey one. We're going to be doing these conferences. Uh, in states all across the country. So when you come to this conference, in that same platform I talked about, you can find connections to government agencies and corporations all across the country. Because now we're building a national network. 
where everybody's connected and everybody can find the tools they need to grow and they find the contracts they need to build their revenue. So that's what I, we're doing. We call it diverse link. We bring all of the diverse areas together, minority, women, veteran, disabled, etc. Everybody together, bring all the corporations together, all the government agencies together across the country, all together in one place. So we now have the resources to grow our companies and build wealth in our communities. So I encourage you all to come out to the conference in January. I look forward to meeting you individually here, answering any questions you may have. But I encourage you to come out and then join this fast growing network that we build all across the country. That's about it. Any questions? Can you? Yes. Uh, there are different s sectors of this the diversity landscape: minorities, women, veterans, the people with disabilities, etc. Like uh, yes, when, uh, if you look at the Census Bureau statistics, over 50 percent of companies in the United States are minority or women-owned, but less than seven, less than eight percent of all revenues generated by minority or women-owned companies. Yes, we get a little bit clear on that. So you know, you're saying it's like we're not investing enough in our own businesses, our own community, or we're not seeking out to get these contracts. There is a business case to say that there is discrimination going on in the marketplace where minorities and women are not getting their fair share of contract opportunities or getting business. Okay, I'm, I'm leaving this person. When you say minorities and women, what, what about the? Um, Larry, can you? Can't you hear me? No, I can't hear you without the mic. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. When you say minority, you said women. What about the? What about the? Uh, the black man? So if you, when you break down minority, minority includes African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, and Asian Americans, and of Pacific and um, um, uh, Pacific Islanders and. Uh, Asian Indian. So you look at that landscape of minority, that includes minority. If you want to look at African Americans, let's just look at the state. I pulled back the numbers from the state and I, I started looking at contracts won by African Americans in the state from hub numbers, historical and utilized businesses. And then I started looking at it from the construction because I was focusing on construction at the time. I found out that we have more than I think nine percent something. I have to. I'm thinking back. Nine percent of all construction companies. No, more than that. Um, forget the specific number. I think it was over over, over ten percent. All construction companies are minority owned, right? African American. I'm sorry. African American owned. Less than two percent of the revenue in the state is going to African Americans. So. If you want to pull back the numbers from a minority perspective and look at African Americans, African Americans are actually now the second largest group in that from those four sectors. Hispanic now uh, Hispanic companies are now number one in terms of volume. African Americans number two, Native uh, uh, Asian Americans three, and then Native Americans four. Actually, yeah, yeah, that's the uh, so African Americans are still. When you pull back those numbers, very, very low. Very low. And I'm going to leave with this. I, you know, as a strong black, blue, black nationalist, I, don't understand, I just don't understand how we're number two. You, you get where I'm coming from? Absolutely. And I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we're the fastest growing growth of businesses in the country. But there is a disparity out there. And that's why we have supplier diversity. That's why I'm fighting for what I'm fighting for for everybody here in the uh, in the marketplace, especially our minority companies. Yes, Bert. I just wanted to ask a question. I thank everyone that came out today to share this information. But one of the things that I would like to ask you, and maybe even the, maybe even uh, Lepron would, would like to uh, chime in on this, is and like I asked before about internships for our young people, 
opportunities to not just be in the midst of this generation, but making sure that our youth are able to actually tap into this and understand the process, because if we don't teach it on that level, we're only repeating the cycle, and the percentage is still going to be the same. Yes. I'm so glad you brought that up, because I failed to mention one thing. We, I'm looking at diversity holistically. Right? So my system, as I shared with you, has an HR component where you can go into the system to find individuals that are diverse to hire at your company. So how do I get those individuals in the system as well? So we are now in this conference, we're rolling out for the first time, but one day will be a contracting trade fair, the next day will be a diversity job fair. So we're trying to get all the students from universities all across the state, North and South Carolina, as well as individuals looking for gainful employment to come to the conference as well. Because diversity goes across workforce as well as the supplier or the contractor angle. That's inclusive of all diversity, right? You, you hire great people, they, they help you grow your company, and the community grows organically that way. So we're doing a job fair as well with those same corporations that are coming to, to look to do business with minority businesses. We want them to hire minority individuals as well. So that's what we're doing in our conference. I just wanted to add one more request to that for you. I would love to get a stack of these. I work with students and parents that are looking to send their students off to college. And so I'm on college campuses a lot. And I would really love to connect with you to make sure that we can get this into the hands of students now. Because even looking at the cost of it, I'm sitting here going early bird, 159. That's for the, the it's free for the students and for individuals looking for jobs. Okay. For companies, it's 149. But so, I mean, even the price of it. So if it's free for students, please, if I can get a sack of these, I really want to get these into to the hands of students. And, okay, and I'll, um, I'll respond to her as well. So one of the contracts that we want, um, so government, as Bert was saying, is very well aware that they have not been meeting their contracting goals, they have not been meeting certain goals, and they specifically are not meeting goals in terms of their on-the-job training, especially in construction trades. So one of the contracts that they hired us to do is to put together an on-the-job training program for 18, it's really late high school um, to young adults because many small businesses are suffering so much so they cannot find folks who have the skill sets to work with them, especially in construction and even more so in highway construction, not just general construction. And so they're doing this on the job training program to give people the skills. And let's face it, many of us want our kids to go to college. But some kids aren't built for college. They just need a trade and a skill and an honest way to make a living. And so this is an alternative to that. And so they are well aware of that. Um, you know, there have been challenges in the past of mindset. Because not only are we training kids with skills, but we're also training them on, you know, etiquette, and how to present yourself in an interview, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that is a part of it. So in addition to what Bert is saying, and I'm telling you, get your kids to come to his conference because it is phenomenal how they set everything up. And many people did not come because they felt like $159 was expensive. Uh, but they we were literally doing deals in the lounge. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was really, really well put together. And so I'm glad to hear that there's a job. So I'm, I'm going to be your advocate. You want, me to, you want a testimony? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> But there, so the government as well as Bird and others are aware that we need to give our kids a, a different set of skills because schools are fine and we teach to the test so they can pass the test based on what they believe are standard, standardized scores. But you know, we need to give kids, make them ready for jobs immediately and this is a way to do that. So I'm just letting you know that this, it's coming and they, they are well aware of that. One disclaimer. I have the website on here, but we have not launched the website yet because we're doing the job fair as well. And so we want to do matchmaking on the job side so individuals can put their resumes in the platform. We can, the, the businesses can search uh, by resume or skill set and other types of things. It takes some time to build that out. That will be the website address, but it's just not up yet. So just a disclaimer for you. It will be up in the next couple of months. Um. 
so I, um, I'm not sure really that you have, will have an answer to this. Um, so there are there are com big, there are companies, all right. There are the companies that you want to link together, and there are people who are coming up looking for jobs that you want to link together. But there are um, gazillions of quote companies, people who have businesses, but the business is just themselves and their husband or themselves and their daughter. Um, and recently, I went to a minority. Um, business event meeting where a man from Charlotte, Mr. Rock, um, distinguished between um, have people saying they have a business because they have a business license and they are, he says, You're, that's being self-employed. Being a business means you are employing people. You have employees. Um, so where within your model is there a way for these um, individual <coughs> self-employed people to to interact or to um, to come together in a, as a cooperative? Um, Kenny Muhammad has been talking about that for now quite a bit about how to how to umbrella the, all of these self-employed people. Great question. What you're referencing is sole proprietorship versus a partnership or a C-Corp or an S-Corp, right? Sole proprietor is basically a small person, self-employed, but you're still a company. You could be a multi-million dollar self-employed individual as a consultant, a lawyer, or other types of, uh, of uh, companies, uh, and doing very well uh, from a revenue perspective, but just only one person in the company. So. Uh, we don't distinguish in terms of your ability to perform based on your sole proprietorship or any type of le other levels of companies. However, we want companies to grow and hire employees because that's how people, how you grow the community, right? So we want to create wealth. We want to help companies understand how to grow. The company I was telling you about, we took from three million to uh, 150 million in two years. They had over 5,000 employees over a three-year period of time after we worked with them. And they before had about 150. So it's about growing wealth for you and your family by also growing your company and creating jobs. And that's what we want to address. Now, the second part of the question, how do we help these small sole proprietors get connected, get, uh, uh, get more revenue, et cetera? As I share uh, in the system, we have a couple of things. One is we have a partnership platform. So you can go into the system and find partners, send out a request to companies to respond to you to become a partner of yours to go after a contract. Uh, that was shared, the example was shared earlier. The other thing is, it's not a system just for you to connect with corporations, just for you to connect with government agencies and tribes. It's a system for you to connect with each other. The thing we've missed many times in the diverse community is we don't do business with each other. So in the system, you can search by diversity ownership and find the companies in your region or, or throughout the country that you want to do business with yourself and have minority business to minority business utilization. Right? So we talk to everybody else about what's your spend numbers? How much are you spending with African-American owned companies, minority owned companies, women owned companies? The question is how much are you spending as well with your own community? So it's about everyone connecting with each other yeah. to do business with each other, but everyone else, right? If I focus just on the, uh, the African American community, I got all these other communities that I haven't even tapped out here. So the system allows you to connect with everyone, right? We're bringing everybody to get together. That's the whole purpose. I hope that addresses your question. Just a quick question. I noticed that on your flyer, you've mentioned the K-12 schools. How does that fit into your business model here? K-12 schools. My, one of my business, biggest champions in my last conference was Pam Gales with Wake County Public Schools. She was, she's wonderful. We want to bring out all the school systems across the state, across the two states to come and meet with minority-owned firms as well as meet with individuals who are looking for jobs as well. 
So we want, we encourage all of the agencies, they will be considered an a part of a government agency, to come. So if you see here in the middle, you can see all the different categories that we're trying to focus on, trying to bring everybody out. There's, a, there's an organization in North Carolina called the Minority the MWBE Coordinators Network, Minority Women Business Enterprise Coordinators Network. It's all the diversity practitioners who run the programs for the, the state agencies, local agencies, as well as corporations. They're part of an organization. So we're going to be working with them and getting all of their hundred and some members to come out and represent all these different agencies around the country, I mean around the state. However, there's a thing we're doing to make sure that you have the ability to meet with as many folks as possible. As I shared with you earlier, we have this matchmaking. Remember, you create your profile, say this is what I sell, agency say this is what I buy, and the system matches you, and then you can schedule meetings, 15 minute meetings with agencies or corporations, etc. But there's only a certain period of time throughout the day you can only meet with like eight or nine companies, right? What about everybody else? So what we're doing is we're putting this online. We're having a virtual summit as well, so that you can still schedule meetings, but pick up the phone and have a conference call with, that, with those agencies and companies as a second day. So you're getting two conferences and one registration with what we're doing. So we're trying to do some innovative things to maximize the opportunities for you. But even if you don't meet with them in that second day, you still connect it all year long throughout the system so you can still reach out to them individually try to do business with them. We're trying to make it easy for you, or easier for you, how about that? Any questions? Well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed being here, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.